Hey, Pisces star seeds, it's Sweet Spirit Mystic. Thank you for tuning in. All right. Let's see what the messages are today. All right, I'm going to wait on that one. Okay. We have the Two of Wands. Making a decisive action choice. Knight of Pentacles. This has been slow going, but it's something that you've been working on steadily. Um, I've said this in the past before. It's a phrase in Spanish. It's sin prisa para sin pausa. So basically what it means is without, wait, hold on. Sin prisa, without rushing, but without pausing. It's it's like you keep going. You know that you're making steady progress. So I feel like that is what you're doing. You're making these choices that every day are getting you closer to your goals. Sin prisa para sin pausa. Goodness, I wish I spoke Spanish. Mm. I just know little words and phrases here and there. But, okay. Okay, so we have Seven of Swords. We have the Ten of Swords. Ooh, ouchie. And then we have the Hierophant. Okay, so the Hierophant is the teacher. Okay, in traditional tarot decks, it's like that religious leader or pope. And then there's, there's subjects or priests or students underneath. And it looks two, two, two. Looks like they're teaching. Okay. So. That is, mm, excuse me, there's talking outside. That's what's needing to change for you. Because with the Seven of Swords and the Ten of Swords, there's been a lot of, oh wow, okay, this is a big, this is a more spiritual lesson, spiritual reading. So let's, Let's go slowly. So in the world today, and I'm not saying everywhere, there they're doing work on the roof. Hmm. That's a metaphor for someone. Okay. So the Seven of Swords is about deception, lies, manipulation. The Ten of Swords is about endings, betrayals, something that is finally complete. So these two cards together, even though it's difficult energy, it's positive because the Ten of Swords is an end. And then it becomes the one again. And the Ace of Swords is about truth. So at this juncture, there is a change in belief system. Anything that is false is being exposed. Okay. And that's part of the work that you do. So in a way, you are this teacher the number 44 might be important to you. That's the master healer. That reduces down to an eight. So it's part of the work that you do. However, you do it in a different way. It's nothing pushy, it's subtle. The ones that come to you, they come to you, but you're not going out and looking. You're not pushing it down anyone's throat. It's an open invitation. 
and you're bringing an end to anything that is false. And it takes time sometimes to see what is false. So let's look into this Seven of Swords, Ten of Swords. What is this? Who is this? Okay, wow. King of Wands. Fire sign energy. Again, as you've known, if you've been on this channel, this card has come up in different forms. So sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. It's up to your own discernment, but what this is telling me is this is Lilla is is that this is part of your karmic path this lifetime is to know the difference because there is a positive side to the King of Wands. There is a shadow side to the King of Wands. People exhibit it at different times. It's about balancing out that energy. So the Eight of Cups. So this came on top of this nine, not nine, eight, Knight of Pentacles. So Eight of Cups, Knight of Pentacles associated with this King of Wands. So you are slowly working towards detaching from this King of Wands. And there's a lot of cups here in this picture. And that's a squid or a, a mollusk. They move around by siphoning water. Guess who's a water sign? You. So they operate by siphoning energy off of someone who has a lot of emotional depth. Okay. Hi, my name is Allison and I'm an emotional enabler. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, Pisces, this is the lesson. This is a hard one. Because if you look in your past, there's probably a lot of people that are similar to this. They come across as very dynamic, passionate, go getting. But as you get to know them, you realize that they're not that, that they're lazy, that they, you know, just kind of sit back with their hands, uh, you know, behind their head waiting for everyone to come to them. They don't actually do anything. So guess who they've been waiting for? You, because you have a lot of positive energy to give. Okay, this is, this is a hard one because I'm working on this too. So this is that lesson. Who are we giving our energy to? And is it time to stop? Have you seen where it's a lie? They don't give back. They don't even do these small things that you've asked them for. They remember other people and do other things for other people. But what about you? When you're the one who gives a majority of energy to them and you justify it, and those justifications are true. However, but it's not at your expense. Okay. Okay, give me one second. It's loud. I'm going to take a sip of this tea. So a lot of work is going on around you. You are part of this. You're elevating the community to recognize where everyone does this. We're more susceptible because that's our shadow side as being these martyrs. However, everything needs to be balanced. For example, I have a dear friend who we've traveled with before or we've traveled together before, usually to like these sacred places. And he was asking, hey, you know, let's go somewhere. It's been a while. And I'm like, well, you know, money's really tight. <laughs> Anyone in the US knows this. I'm like, I'm barely able to buy groceries these days. Um, which does a lot for your spirituality because when you're thin, your mind is sharp, let me tell you. 
Um, <laughs> but, you know, there's that edge, right? There's always an edge. But he was like, hey, you know what? If, if you can get yourself to that place, I'll pay for accommodations. Wow, this is a friend. So there's this that we're looking for, this kind of reciprocity. Like, I'll be there for you. I know that you need this. Your energy is really healing. And he didn't say this, but I feel it. He knows that when we spend time together, there's this healing aspect. And that's valuable. And he benefits from that, but he gives back. Accommodations can be quite expensive, as you know. And it's like, oh, hey, if I can find a, a flight that works, we can go somewhere and do some healing work together. Okay. All right. So reciprocity is key. We have the Four of Cups and the Magician. So 1111. There is someone here, this King of Wands, that basically ignores your abilities as an alchemist, as a magician, as someone that can transmute negative energy into positive energy. They don't value that. They're like, oh yeah, I deserve that. Give me more. Okay, you know, you see those people who are just waiting in the wings for everyone with their mouth open. You know what I'm talking about. And they're like, yeah, 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 I deserve all this. Ooh, this makes me mad. And remember, you know, fire sign energy, that's their shadow. Because I'm not trying to blast fire signs because there are very positive qualities in fire signs. You know, they're go-getters. You know, they can lead. They can, you know, make things happen, break through barriers. That's great energy. But there's also the shadow. So you're looking for people who have a fairly balanced shadow and, and light side. And as this master healer, you can help people who are maybe a, a step or two behind. But it cannot be skewed, like, incredibly. It has to be, you know, pretty good, okay? And then you're like, oh, that's that one missing piece that levels everything out. But that's the thing. They have to cultivate it within themselves. You can show them, but it's the work that they need to do. So if you're constantly around them, propping them up, dragging them along, they're not learning. They're just taking. Okay, and we have the moon card. That's your energy. All those hidden things, this hidden knowledge that you are privy to. They're not. Remember, you are the master healer, master teacher, master guide. You've been through all the incarnations. Remember, Aries, for example, is the first sign of the zodiac. Guess what? You're the 12th. That's the last alpha omega situation. You've been through all the fires, the tests. This Aries, this King of Wands, Leo or Sag, guess what? They still have a lot of steps to go, but they won't learn it if you're doing it for them. So, Eight of Swords, wow. So, this is showing reversed. Normally, I don't read reversals, but I think it's important for this is that you are seen clearly, which means you are no longer trapped. You are no longer stuck in this space of this infinite loop with all of these emotional addicts, let's say. So that means, guess what, cold turkey. Guess what, you have to distance yourself. Get yourself to some Al-Anon meetings, okay? The hanged one. This change of perspective. Look, there's a circle here. Oh, I get it now. Let me stop. It doesn't mean that I don't love this person, but I need to let them go through some hard times. 
and I'm not saying it's rock bottom. I'm not saying it's abandoning anyone. It's like, hey, I'll, I'll talk to you next week. Let me know how it goes. You have to discern how severe this is. You know, sometimes people do need support, but it's not so much. It's like, hey, how are you doing? That's enough. Hey, I believe in you. Look inside. Talk to your therapist. That's support. It's not, oh, okay, tell me everything. Let me soak everything up. Let me be in the sauce with you. Let me tell you everything step by step. It's like, no. There's this strength that happens from trial and error and, and pushing and testing your muscles. So that's what this person needs to do. They need to get in the gym and train because they're now being tested. So if you're doing all the training for them, how are they gonna run the marathon when you've been doing it? They're not, they won't make it. They'll be killed. I know that's dramatic, but look at this ten of swords. That's not uh, roses and butterflies at all. This is, ouch. Okay, so nine of cups and the devil. So this is, this is beautiful. This is, you know, all of our fears, our obsessions. Oh, okay, there's two meanings for this. This is happiness too, the nine of cups. Addiction or being around that fills a need in you. Oh, I'm helping. You're addicted to helping people. That makes you happy, which is beautiful and wonderful. But remember, there is a line, okay? You have to see people that come to you for help, but they're actually working in a direction. Okay. Okay, so we have the Two of Swords. Do not doubt yourself. This is a, a Siamese fighting fish. Yep, people got to fight the fight on their own. You can't put two of these in a tank together. They'll fight each other. They'll cancel out the energy. One person has to do their own work, fighting their own fight. There's going to be some anxiety. There's going to be some hard times on both sides, okay? Withdrawal tendencies. Oh, wait, but I want to help. Ugh, I can't. Put all that energy towards yourself and your own stability, your own goals. If you have something you want to work on, put all your energy into that. You're helping yourself. And they're going to watch you help yourself. And they're going to help themselves. And if they don't, you know, there's no progress. And why would you be with them anyway? Because they're bringing you down to their level. When they need to be striving to get to where you're at. Ooh, Page of Pentacles. This is a tough lesson to learn, okay? So I'm gonna let this sit here, let it sink in. You're okay. You are this master healer. It is your job to heal. Showing people how to heal because you've healed yourself, but they've gotta do their own work. Okay, all right, Pisces, I love you. We'll see you soon.